in Sound Focus 1, we're looking at content words. And we want to know that in speaking, we stress the content words. So this one is called stressing content words. So if we look at the grammar of the language, we can divide words into two categories, content words and function words. So content words are the words which really carry a lot of meaning, a lot of content. And these words are typically nouns, main verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So those are the main categories. Tell me, what are they? Nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. All right, can you name all of those? What are the four? The four main ones. Nouns. Adjectives. Nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Okay, those are the, mo those are the main categories that you're going to think of when we think of the content words of the language. So, for example, if I tell you this story only saying the content words and not saying the function words, the function words are the kind of small words that we use, the grammar linking words that put all the, all the, all the content together. But listen to what happens if I tell you the story and omit the function words and tell you only the content words. Here's how it sounds. John Thornton saved Buck's life. Further, perfect master. Other men looked after dogs because thought their duty, because good business. John Thornton looked after dogs if own children because couldn't help, he saw further, never forgot kind word, sit down, long talk, his delight as much as theirs. He had way, taking Buck's head roughly between hands, resting own head, Buck's, shake Buck back forth, all time calling bad names, Buck love names. Buck knew no greater joy, master's rough embrace, name calling. Each pull back forth, seen heart, shaken out of body, joy so great. When John Thornton let go, Buck sprang, feet, mouth laughed, eyes sparkled, throat vibrated, unspoken sounds. That manner, Buck remained without moving. John Thornton cry, God, almost speak. Did you understand the story? With just the content words? Yes. Yes. So what does that tell us? The content words are the most important words in the sentence. Are important words going to be longer or shorter? Longer in longer, duration? Longer. longer. Okay, are they be stronger longer. or weaker? Stronger. They're stronger. Right. Higher or lower? Higher. 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 So Higher. In, in, Higher. in contrast, the function words need to be shorter. They need to be weaker and they need to be lower. Right? So there's a big difference when we speak, not when we write. When we write, we still have to have the same number of letters, whether we're typing it or we're writing it by hand, the same number of letters. In fact, some content words are very short in terms of letters, but long in speech, while other function words are many letters long, but short in pronunciation when we speak in the stream of speech. I'm not talking about individual words that we say one at a time. I'm talking about words in phrases, because we speak phrase by phrase. We don't speak words, we speak ideas. So we want to make sure to make these words longer and clearer and higher. So what are the four main categories of words that are content words? Nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. That's it, nouns, verbs, adjective, and adverbs. Now, for verbs, we can separate into two kinds main verbs and auxiliary verbs. The main verb is the one that's a content. Auxiliary verbs, unless they're negative, they don't necessarily, they don't usually, uh, we don't usually say them very long. For example, I am speaking. 
In this case, I is a subject, am speaking is a verb, it has two parts. The main verb is speaking, and the auxiliary is am. But I don't say am and speaking with the same amount of force, or length, or duration, or pitch. I say, I'm speaking. So the speaking, that's the main verb. This is the one we want to focus on when we are considering the verbs. Nouns are just one word, adjectives are one word, and adverbs are one word. But verbs often have more than one part in order to complete that whole verb. We also have a few other categories of words that are considered to be content words. Some pronouns, like my and your and he and her, those words are function words. But words that we call demonstrative pronouns, and we have four in, in English, this one, that one, these things, and those things. So this, that, these, and those. Those are four demonstrative words. Those are the ones we point to. So those are also content words. So if I say, come with me, and you'll say, where? you say, come this way. All right, so we always say, come this way. We don't ever say, come this way. We always say, come this way, go that way. We always stress that because we're pointing, we're demonstrating. That's why we call it a demonstrative pronoun. We also have possessive pronouns. That's mine. Don't take that book. That's mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was yours. It looks just like mine. Isn't that his? Those are possessive pronouns. So those also are content words. Reflexive pronouns are like this. I look in the mirror and I see myself. You see yourself. She sees herself. He sees himself. We see ourselves. You see yourselves. Those are reflexive pronouns. And so those also um, fall into the category of content words. Negatives. Anything that's negative for not, right? No. We always say, no, 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 no. We don't say, no, 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 no. We always use no, right? I mean, we have a loud word. And when we say never, I'm never going to go out with that guy again. We stress that word. We also stress negatives like don't, didn't, can't. Can you come? No, I can't. I can't come. I'm busy. So any negative words, none, nothing. So those are negatives. Those are also considered in the same category of, of content words. Why? The default is affirmative and the different one is negative. So we make that one longer and stronger. All right, what other words fit in uh, words that uh, ask a question? Who, what, where, why, how, how much, how many? These are also content words. Numbers, one, two, three, four, 42, 65. Those are content words. Quantity words like uh, many, much, these are content words, all right? So these are examples that we have here. Uh, if we say have called, yes, uh, they have called me several times. Called is the main verb, have is the auxiliary, and that's very weak. In fact, this is one of the words that we can contract in writing. We can say they've with T-H-E-Y apostrophe V-E, they've called, all right? So when we use the auxiliaries as spoken English, we usually make them very short and the main verb is long. If we say their duty, it's their duty, it's their duty to, to uh, clean up that, uh, that area of the room. Then the word there is short and duty, the noun, is long. Adjectives, she's tall. She's tall, beautiful, and intelligent. All of those three adjectives are long, whereas the word she is short and the word is is short. So the only verb that doesn't fall into this category. The only verb that is an exception to the four kinds that are always content words. One, the one exception is the verb to be. So any form of the verb to be, like am. I don't say I am a teacher, right? I'm a teacher. We even contract. We we you know, we contract that. We have contractions. So am is are, and then the past was and were. So we usually make these very short. I was busy. So I didn't take the call. I was busy. Was, was make it very short. Adverbs. I'm very busy. I'm too busy. I'm extremely busy. So T-O-O -O and T-W-O. T-W-O means two, so that's a long word. That's a content word. T-O-O, -O, two, meaning too, meaning excessive. I'm too busy to go with you. Sometimes we say we have three twos. We have T-O, but T-O, generally we do not say two. We usually say to because it's usually in a phrase. Unless we're saying one word at a time, which we don't speak. We speak phrase by phrase, right? So we say, 
Um, I'm going to the store. I'm walking to the store. To, to, to. I'm walking to the gym, right? So, to, to, right? And also the to in an infinitive, right? To eat, to do. Are you going to, uh, well, if we don't, we, if, we, if we use going to, of course, then we don't even say the word to. But if we have the to, need to, I need to study. So that's a to sound and not a to sound. Now, I did say the demonstrative of that, this, these, and those, and possessives, and reflexives, and the negatives. What else? Um, quantity words. Oh, like all students. All right. So, again, two major categories. The first one is the content all the content words, and the other ones are function words. So these include articles. In English, we only have three articles, a, an, and the. Now, I say a, an, the. In a phrase, we don't say a, and we don't say an. We say a, right? A girl, a boy. So we say a, like an, an, an egg, an orange. We usually say it like that, unless we say it one word at a time. There are three of them, three articles. There's also all the prepositions like at and of and with and to and through. For example, through, T-H-R-O-U-G-H is a long word when we write it, but it's not a long word when we pronounce it in a phrase with other, other words, other nouns. Um, all the auxiliaries. So the auxiliaries, common ones we use are for, from the verb be, like I am singing, she is working, and have, I have sung. She has worked. Those are auxiliaries. And other words like can and could. I can sing. I could sing yesterday. I can sing now. So could and can usually are short. But the negatives are long. I can't go. I can't sing. I couldn't go with you. So the negatives are long, but the affirmatives are short. Um, all the personal pronouns like he and she. So in this lesson, we also talk about when we pronounce H and when we don't pronounce H. When we pronounce H, when it's necessary, at the beginning of content words, at the beginning of stressed syllables in content words, at the beginning of a phrase, an oral phrase. Um, but otherwise, if they are in a function word, like the word he and the word his and the word him, if this comes in a phrase, in the middle of a phrase, then we delete the H and we link the words together. So we'll practice that. Like, well, here, like, what's her name? We don't say, what's her name? What's his name? We say, what, sir? What, sir? No H. What, sir? It makes it short. What's her name? What's his? What's his? What's his name? So we, oh, we delete, we omit, we get rid of the H sound. Um, in those function words. Okay, here's another one. The word T-H-A-T -T has more than one meaning. If I say that car is mine, that laptop is mine, that's a demonstrative pronoun. But we also use this uh, word for other pronoun uses. The car that I saw. Where is that car that I saw just a minute ago? Wasn't it parked over here? No, it's parked over there. Okay, so this word is used as a relative pronoun. And we don't say that. We consider that a function word that just joins these two clauses together. The, 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 the car that I saw. Where is the car that I saw over there? Oh, now it's over there. So the, the very short, very weak, and very low. Relative pronouns include that and which and who and whose and whom. When they're in the position of relative pronouns, then we make them short and low. Also, we introduce noun clauses with the word that. I was thinking that I would invite you to my house next week. I was thinking that. I was thinking that I, that I, that I, that I, that I'd invite you to my house next week. So that kind of introduction is pronounced the, all right, for that kind of pronoun and all the forms of the verb be. All right, so those are the things that you need to pay attention to in listening, all right? Because on paper, they all look the same. 
the words look exactly the same. It's only when you are listening to it and you build up your ability. You put all these pieces together, a little bit of grammar knowledge, some vocabulary knowledge, and a lot of listening, a lot of feeling. And you can feel the rhythm, how it's different when you have long, long, long versus long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. So we have different kinds of rhythm. So for example, if I, um, you know, going back to this whole idea of the importance of content words, I told you the story two ways, right? I told you the story with all the words, and you understood it. And then I told you the story with just the content words, and you still understood it, because those are the, mo the most important words. If, on the other hand, I omitted all the content words, and I told you the story only with the function words, how do you think that would be? Do you think you'd understand it? Okay, I'll try it. Had, but he was the, their, they, it was their, and it was for his, they were, his, it, any, e, uh, and to, uh, for a rhythm. Do you get the meaning? Uh, the oh. problem is the communication. I cannot uh, hear what you said. Yeah, I cannot. Okay, so. You cannot hear anything, or you can hear a little bit? Yeah, as if the, the communication was broken. The communication was broken? Okay. Let me just check my input. My input is on my internal microphone, so it should be working. No, Marcia, Marcia, I thought it was the purpose of the, exercise, of the exercise. Ah, yes. Okay. So, in other words, it sounds as if I'm not saying anything. Right? Because if I say only the function words, you don't get any meaning at all. That's my point, all right? That's my point. My point is that your content words need to be long and the function words need to be short. That's what you need to do when you're listening and when you're speaking, especially when you're speaking out those ideas, okay? So, John Thornton would say box life, but further, he was a perfect master. Okay, do you get what I'm doing with my hand, making long? These are longer when the words are longer, okay? Other men looked after their dogs because they thought it was their duty and because it was good for their business. John Thornton looked after his dogs as if they were his own children because he couldn't help it and he saw further. He never forgot a kind word, and to sit down for a long talk with them was his delight as much as theirs. Now, I'm going to stop right here because I want to say normally we make all of those function words short and low and we make all the content words long and clear, but there are certain cases where we take a function word that normally is short and low and weak and we make it big and strong because we want to emphasize something, because we want to contrast two ideas. All right, so if you hear this sentence again, you'll notice that we, we would say, we're, we're saying that in this story, it was his delight as much as theirs. Now, normally we don't stress the word his. We usually say it was his delight. So if all I wanted to talk about was about John Thornton, then I would say, yes, it was his delight to play with his dogs and talk with them and send, give them a lot of kind words. It was his delight to do that. But here, the author wants to tell you, it was his delight as much as theirs, meaning the dogs. That means he enjoyed this activity as much as the dogs. Of course the dogs would enjoy it because when the dogs are being petted and patted and, you know, the, the master is taking care of the dogs. Of course they love this. So that's no, normal. That's natural. That's to be expected. But the author wants to tell you how much pleasure the master, John Thornton, received from doing this as well. So he uses this contrastive. So this is in the contrastive stress. It was his delight as much as theirs. So this is an example of how function words can also be stressed for emphasis, especially for contrast. Keep that in mind, all right? Keep that in mind. Because lots of times I hear 
So even when, you know, when you advanced speakers are speaking, stressing the wrong word cannot, you know, give off the sort of not quite the right uh, impression to someone. So we'll come back to that after we do a little work with some TH sounds. What do you think about that? Okay. Well, I hope you've got your tongue